Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Labour has organised huge marches, including yesterday, and Jeremy Corbyn says that Theresa May has lost all legitimacy. But it's harder just now to point to exactly where Labour MPs have made a real difference on policy. Well, the Walthamstow MP, Stella Creasy, certainly has. She won a big change from the government, which allows women from Northern Ireland to get free abortions in England, and she's with me. Were you surprised by how quickly the government folded? You looked completely gobsmacked at one moment when the announcements were being made in the House of Commons. I was gobsmacked because I wanted to see the detail, but look, there were MPs from across Parliament who recognised that this was an injustice. The challenge for all of us in politics is to do more than be sympathetic, it's to work out what we can do to act. Obviously, the Queen's speech was a good opportunity to say, here are the issues, just because you're going into a deal with the DUP doesn't mean we're going to put equality on the back burner. If the government hadn't changed its mind, did you have the numbers to force a vote and, and beat them, do you think? that would be telling Andrew. What I would say is there certainly was support from across the House and I think that attitude and that ethos, actually there are issues, look, I'm incredibly ideological, I'm passionately a socialist, a democrat, a cooperator, a feminist, but I'm not necessarily tribal and I think there are others who feel like that too and where there are issues where people recognise the government has got it wrong then I think there is progress to be made. Because it has been said that in Northern Ireland, in the nationalist community and mm -hmm. the unionist community there is a different religious based view on abortion which is not the view of a lot of people in the English for instance, and that it's wrong for you as an English MP to impose your values on them. Which would make sense if this was about what was happening in Northern Ireland. This is about what was happening at my local hospital in London and whether women who were coming to England and Wales, would be, who were UK taxpayers, were being denied access to services that they were paying for. Look, I'm passionate that a woman's right to choose is a human right and I'll be working with my colleagues in Northern Ireland to make the case there, but this was something different and I think people across the House recognised that if vulnerable women were turning up at their local hospitals in England and Wales asking for help, they shouldn't be turned away. And so is the next front in this battle to change the law in Northern Ireland as well? I think human rights are a massively important issue for all of us. Equality can't be on the back burner in this new parliament and it behoves all of us to work in many different countries around the world to help support that and that includes in Northern Ireland. And is this just one example of what we're going to see quite a lot of now, which is specific issues suddenly appear in the House of Commons and the government realises it hasn't got a majority and has to change direction? Well, I hope so, because colleagues of mine are doing amazing work on all sorts of issues, whether it's Jim Fitzpatrick and Peter Bottomy on leasehold reform, uh, even the work that Paula Sharif has been doing on women's rights and the tampon tax. Actually, there's a very strong history and tradition of MPs coming up with issues and working across the House to get things done. And I think that's what the public want to see. You voted with the Chuka Amuna Amendment yeah. on the EU, which said that Britain should stay inside the single market. That's completely impossible given the result of the referendum. People voted to leave the EU. Leaving the EU means leaving the single market. I simply don't accept that. There are lots of countries who aren't part of the European Union who are part of the single market. There are other but, countries okay. who are part of the customs union it, who aren't part of the European Union. It means, the... it means staying in, it means paying money into the EU, it means mm -hmm. accepting EU laws and it means no chance of control over migration. Those are the things uh, on which sorry, people voted. But, but, Andrew, with Surely. the greatest will, how do we know that? What a lot of us are saying is we want, in these negotiations, all options to be on the table. To have a government that has forced through a hard Brexit, especially in the light of the general election result, with the public very clearly rejected Theresa May's approach, doesn't make sense to us. And across the House, again, there are MPs saying, we want to see all options. We don't know you, you what is possible to achieve, but what we do know is if you walk in the room and you throw away something like single market membership, which you know, 650,000 okay. jobs in London alone are part of being part of that, it's, it's irresponsible. You had 100 MPs, more or less, went through the lobby on this, out of 600. Britain's membership of the single market is now over. You've won that, you've, you've fought that battle and you've comprehensively lost it. It's over, isn't it? I think there is support across the House for saying what options should be on the table. It, very evidently, the British public said no to Theresa May's hard Brexit. But what all of us want is the best deal for Britain. None of us want to rerun the referendum. But what we are saying is, why would you leave some of the big things off the table when you're talking to our European okay. counterparts? But there's a big change of tone in the mm. Labour Party since the election. Jeremy Corbyn has been a long-term opponent mm. of the EU in many ways. He made his view of the single market very, very clear. Was he right, do you think, to sack people who voted against him this time? 
Look, that's absolutely his right as the leader of the party, and I'm a former chief whip on a hung council. I have a strong respect for the importance of whipping. But this isn't about the internal politics of the Labour movement. There were MPs across the House who talked about the importance of single market membership and having that debate. This is about a cross-party discussion about what the best deal looks like. And there are differences of opinions about what the model should be, but there is agreement that Parliament should have its say. And I think the worry for people like me is this government, even after that election result, is still trying to deny MPs a proper role in that process. Jeremy Corbyn has enhanced authority. You have been mm -hmm. a critic in the past on lots of issues. Isn't it time for people like you to fall into line now and accept that the Labour Party has changed direction, it's no longer such a broad church, as has been said this week, and you have to kind of fall into line behind Jeremy Corbyn and demonstrate that you're properly loyal to a successful leader? Joe, because we won such a great result in the election, we won 30 seats, we've got the opportunity now, not just to hold this government to account, but to show the difference that Labour can make when it's in office. And I hope this week we've started to show how that would work. I think we've got to continue doing that. And now as part of that, I know Jeremy is committed to every MP playing their part, being able to be out there, right. campaign from the ground upwards. I didn't feel I quite got an answer there, but Stella Creasy, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning.